What's up everyone, welcome back to another review, and this time we're taking a look at The Scorpion King, the prequel that tells the story of the aforementioned character from The Mummy Returns. In this movie, we find out that he was an Akkadian warrior known as Matthias, and this movie pretty much tells the story about how Matthias would go into the, uh, into the, uh, tener into the, the, uh, vicious warrior known as the Scorpion King from The Mummy Returns movie. Okay, um, I'm gonna do my best to keep this review as short and sweet and as coherent as humanly possible. By itself, I think The Scorpion King is a serviceable movie. This film is directed by Chuck Russell. I like Chuck Russell. I love, I love, uh, I love Night, uh, he done, he has done movies like Eraser with Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Mask, and he also did Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warrior. So, Chuck Russell has got some credentials to, uh, to fans of his work and to fans of those movies. And him doing this movie, it's gonna be in good hands in terms of a coherent visual style and a visual... Which I think, for the most part, Chuck Russell does bring this movie. Uh, when I compare this movie to, let's say, Mummy 3, I would go back to watch The Scorpion King first before The Mummy 3, because at least The Scorpion King, it, it has a sense of... It has a funness to it. It has a cheesy, charming quality to it. And it has The Rock. You know, it's The Rock. You know, who doesn't love The Rock? This was The Rock's first leading role, uh, officially. And, and The Rock just has a very, very charming and very, very just uh, uh, screw, uh, present snatching charisma that he bring and he brings that to this movie. Like The Rock in the lead role, he was fine in it. You know, he doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue, which is fine. You don't want to, you don't want to give uh, a guy who is not a seasoned actor so much dialogue, uh, particularly because so it's going to sound robotic. Like how you are in the ring, how you are in the ring is not how you're going to be on screen. It's going to be two different animals. So they were smart not to give The Rock a lot of dialogue. And when The Rock does have dialogue exchanges, he holds his own for the most part. And he has actors who are more seasoned than him that make it, to make him look good. Like he has a lot of scenes with Michael Clark Duncan, who plays a character named Balthazar in this movie. I like Michael Clark Duncan. I enjoyed him in this movie. I would have liked to see more of the... Of a, I would like to see more of the family robbery that Matthias and Balthazar had, was de had developed. Uh, we, we, we see Balthazar in the beginning of the movie, and then he comes back in the third act of the movie. The entire middle section is pretty much gone. I mean, I would have I would have had more of his scenes peppered throughout the movie because I was actually liking the stuff with him and Matthias. I thought it was actually pretty entertaining. Uh, uh, Kelly Wu, who plays Cassandra, is a sorceress. She's the love interest for Matthias. I like Kelly Wu. In this movie, she is an absolute goddess. Of, she's an absolute goddess, and, and she's still a goddess in, in, even now. In this movie, she's dropped dead gorgeous. I thought her and Rock also had decent chemistry. Nothing to the quality of, let's say, Frasier and Rachel Wise, but decent enough to where I care about these two. Uh, Russell Brand, who plays the villain Memnon, listen, I give Russell Brand credit. He's trying to be to make this character stand out and be intimidating, but I think he's just underwritten. And just not that interesting. Not that interesting at all, especially when you compare him to Emotep. Uh, but if I'm going to compare Memnon to, let's say, the, Jared, the Dragon Emperor, Memnon wins by an inch. He, I mean, Memnon has just one inch of intrigue over the Dragon Empire, and it's not that much. Uh, from a directorial standpoint, as I mentioned before, this is a good... This is an overall solid-looking movie. You know, it has decent action sequences that are well done by Chuck Russell. Uh, it does have a good overall production look and design to it. Uh, if I do have a lot of gripes, I, I mean, though, and that's actually where my positives end. This is with the cast, the directing, and the production values. Get on to my negatives. If you're watch, watch this movie by itself, it's a fun, goofy, serviceable action movie that has a superhero-like feel to it. I mean, come on, you have Matthias hanging around with a kid and with a uh, comedy psychic played by Grant Henslow. Now, if you were to watch this movie the way it's intended to be watched, which is a, as a prequel to The Mummy Returns, it is a completely jarring how the character as portrayed in The Mummy Returns is the character in this movie. In The Mummy Returns, through dialogue, and from what we see, he's portrayed as a villainous type of character. In this movie, as I mentioned, he is portrayed more or less as a superhero-like character. 
it's really it's a real jarring change when you watch this movie back to back with the mummy returns it it, it kind of leaves the question uh, uh, okay shouldn't have this movie been the rise of how a nova warrior grew into a tyrannical tyrant because when you actually watch the mummy returns the scorpion king is much more vicious than the memnon in this movie is I think the movie would have been much more interesting if we saw if we saw the, the descent of this noble Acadian warrior into this man who is just who has a bloodlust for uh, for power and for and for and for war instead of what we got in this movie, which is just this goofy, almost fun-loving guy who is basically the Rock only in ancient Egypt. And that's really my biggest flaw with this movie is that the connective tissue is completely broken to me at least. And that's a it's, to me it's also a very very major flaw into a movie that's just overall a generic yet serviceable action flick. So yeah, with all that being said, overall I do like the Scorpion King. I am going to give it I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to give it a 6.5 by itself. I do like it. It is well made and well done, and it is very, very entertaining. But as connective tissue, as a connective tissue, it to me it just doesn't work, and it just it's a very jarring transition. And this movie should have had a more of a should have had a better plot and a better and a, just a better development of how Matthias became the Scorpion King. I mean, uh, the explanation as to how he became the Scorpion King was that he was bitten by a scorpion, and now the and after Cassandra. Got the uh, scorpion venom out of his out of his system. She said the blood of the scorpion will always be in his veins. Kind of cheesy and kind of hammy and kind of dumb. Yeah, that's that kind of movie. Um, Six point five from Scorpion King. Well, let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check it back next time for more.